All right, so I'll get us kicked off. Good morning. Uh, my name is Brian Kruzniak. I'm from uh, ITS in Kirksville, and I am glad to be here this week. Uh, did, I, I thought I heard that it was a record high yesterday. Is that true? Yes. For January. For January? So it was whatever it was, 81 here. Yesterday, they, there were schools that were canceled just because it was cold, not because it was even so snowy. It was just cold in Kirksville. So I picked the right week to be here. So I'm glad. Happy New Year to everyone. Um, this is the second uh, tech share day that we've, we've had. We had one earlier in Kirksville. And this is the first one that we've had on the, the Mesa campus. And we'll continue to do these. Um, really, the idea is to kind of think about technology and, and try and give people some ideas about what different technologies are out there um, and how we can share. So it's as much about the sharing as it is about the technology. I, I, I think it, as tech matures, we have this combination of feelings between being overwhelmed by all of the new technology that's out there, you know, everything from mobile devices and different types of tools, um, you know, all of the different kinds of things that we can use. So there's this overwhelmed feeling that people have, and then there's also this promise of all of the future things, all the great things that we can do. And, and as as the technology continues to mature, I, I think it becomes more and more difficult for people to filter what's important, what's not important. So part of the reason for doing this is we hope to kind of be the filter for some of this content so that we can kind of fi figure out what nuggets of material might be of interest to people at AT Still and try and encapsulate those in a day. Maybe not give you everything, but give you little bits so that you can kind of find areas um, that are of more interest to individual people and then you can dig a little bit deeper. But rather than having to go into the internet and be overwhelmed from salespeople and uh, professional organizations and magazines and everything else that's just shooting your way, um, we kind of want to filter that. So it's not only the in-person sessions that we're doing, but we do the lunch and learns that we try to do every couple of weeks. Um, same kind of thing. So we're, we're trying to get where it's, it's shorter content, more bite-sized type content, but it's not as deep. It's, it's much more shallow. And we're not the only ones that can do that. What's happening as, um, as things just extrapolate all over the place is you guys also see different things than us. So that's really the sharing part of it, is we really want to kind of get ideas from, from the faculty, from the administrators. When you guys go to meetings, you'll see a new service or a new product that's out there. Let us know and we can kind of work together so we can tell you a little bit what the technology components are of it. You can tell us how it helps your organization or your business or your um, area or how it would help your students. Okay, so that's kind of the idea for this. We'll do some in person, we'll do some online. This is being recorded, so if you see something that you think your peers who aren't here could take advantage of, then please pass it along. Um, I want to thank Dean and his group for putting together, I think it's, it's a pretty good day of, of material actually. Um, and we've really tried to include uh, vendors. So we've got vendor presentations, we've got um, faculty people, we've got the libraries helped out a lot. So thanks to, to Mike, I thought I saw him in here earlier. Um, and, to, and to Bill and the guys in Kirksville that's being broadcast there as well. Um, so kind of thanks to all of those people. Uh, thanks to the vendors for helping out. Uh, the 3D printer is set up outside, so I think there's a session on that this afternoon. But you can really look at it all day long. Um, that's a, a new technology, and it's really um, President Phelps who's kind of pushed that type of technology. He's the one who said, you know, let's, let's get some of this stuff in here and just let people think about what are some of the wild ideas that we could change teaching if we had this kind of tool. So take a look at that. Take a look at all of the material that we have over here um, that I guess they've brought that's all been printed on a 3D printer. So you can see there's different types of materials that they can use. It's really an interesting technology. It's not going to go away, um, and it's just at the beginning of kind of a broad swath of things that will happen. So it's really limited by just people's creativity at this point. So that's it for me. I'm going to kind of turn it over. I think our first session is on Zoom. And so uh, Dean will kind of lead the rest of the day, I think. And then we've got uh, Zoom with uh, Ray Jackson. Jay Jackson. Jay Jackson. Sorry, Jay. All right, and kind of to 
kind of set the stage for Zoom. Um, this is something we were, had a product called Scopia Desktop, and we ran it for a while, and we used it a lot for uh, for Soma. They used it to connect to the CHCs, and it was a way to connect like a life-size room comp, uh, video conferencing type of thing to a computer. Is really what it was originally used for. Um, but now we've uh, it, Scopia was kind of buggy. It would crash on us. Uh, wasn't very user friendly. Um, but we've switched now. Uh, in October, we ran some pilots and some tests, and we ended up getting a license for Zoom. Uh, so now we have a license for Zoom for anybody and everybody, faculty, staff at uh, ATSU. Um, it's super easy to use, uh, and that's why we've got Jay here as our uh, salesperson for Zoom, and you're going to have him go ahead and kind of do a kind of a brief overview on how you get started and how you set up and. So if you're ready, Jay, you can go ahead and take it away. Great. Thanks for having me. Um, first of all, how many of you have heard of Zoom or used Zoom before? Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. All right. Great. Um, yeah, so I'm Jay Jackson. I'm with Zoom. We, uh, just to give you just a brief background about us, well, first of all, myself, I, I've been in the industry for 22 years and mostly in hardware-based video conferencing. I joined Zoom about 14 months ago because I really believe that this is going to be the direction of, of visual collaboration. And um, in the, so our company was founded four years ago by uh, the, the same people that essentially started WebEx, if you're familiar with that. And uh, they really founded it on, on what I call three basic principles. They, 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 it's a cloud-based solution. It's a, it's a pay-as-you-go type of a model. But they really founded it on uh, very, very high quality, very simple to use, and it is literally priced for the masses. And if you're going to do that, you're going to have mass deployment. It has to be really simple to use, and that's what I think. We've signed up in the first two years that we've had Zoom in existence. We've signed up over 1,400 universities around the world. So I'll get into a little bit of that. Um, but me personally, I've had an experience with uh, AT Still now for going on uh, six years. Uh, I used to be a rep for uh, Life Size. So I'm actually at, uh, at our headquarters today in uh, Silicon Valley. So I'm actually staring right here at the new uh, 49er Stadium in Santa Clara. But uh, I'm actually from, uh, I live in Fountain Hills usually. And so I'm up here. And it's so cold, I can't hardly feel my fingers. So, which I wish I was back there. So let me uh, let me get right into it. What I wanted to do today is please stop me if you have any questions along the way. Um, but I just I wanted to provide a basic tutorial of how to use Zoom. And so I'm just going to start from the very from the very beginning. If you're going to use Zoom, it works with uh, it works with a PC, a Mac, it works with smartphones, it works with. Uh, tablets, H.323, if, if you're into the technical scene at all, basically that means it works with the, the life size, Polycom, Cisco, Tanberg, Rad Vision, any of that uh, also. So um, you can, uh, each individual, basically, you can come in, you can go to a, uh, if you're on a PC or a Mac, right now, you can go into uh, either gallery view or active speaker role. If you click on gallery view on your PC or your Mac, you can have up to 25 people that you can see at one time on the screen. And so those people, like I said, they could even come in over a telephone, they could dial in that way, okay? Um, with the Zoom platform, you can actually have up to 200 people on a Zoom call all at the, one, all at the same time. Now you're only going to see the first 25, um, but you would scroll through 25 at a time, okay? And with this platform, you also have the ability to chat on live with anyone. So say if you if you just wanted to, uh, you know, say hello to one of your students out there, you can see everyone that is that is online, uh, that is on the call, even if they've turned off their their. Uh, uh, their camera and their microphone. So um, you do have the ability to uh, commute yourself. You can turn off your own camera. Um, 
If you wanted to put in a still photo uh, on your profile, I'll show you how to do that. Um, but let me just start from the, uh, really from the beginning here. I'm gonna go ahead and you can share basically anything that is on your computer, you can share as a, in your presentation, okay? There's two different ways to share your, uh, your computer. You can either share your entire desktop or you can share one specific application. I'm going to share my desktop because I'm going to be moving around to a variety of different uh, screens. But primarily, if you're taking notes on this, I would say by the most part, you're, you're primarily going to want to only share one specific application at a time. And the reason why I say that is if you have like I am a presence uh, that might pop up in a presentation, <laughs> You don't, you don't want people to be seeing that kind of stuff, or maybe an email that might uh, automatically pop up. So that's why I generally say uh, to uh, just share one specific app. Does everyone see my uh, the, the general Zoom application right here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, so this is this is the general Zoom app that uh, that you would open. If you wanted to go in, uh, first of all, I'm going to show you how to uh, schedule a meeting. Um, so you would, you could go in, you can change the meeting name here, you can put in the date and the time, all right? And um, then you can also put in, uh, if you require a meeting password, you might want to have a meeting password for the, for the particular meeting. You can also have enable join before host. And that just simply means that uh, if you have, uh, if you're teaching an eight o'clock session, you have students that uh, are going to come in maybe before you even start it. You can set it up that way. I'm going to explain to you what a uh, personal meeting ID number is uh, in a little bit. Basically, uh, every one of you that has your own Zoom license, you have your own personal meeting ID number that never changes. And you can use that if you want to schedule every one of your meetings. You can go in and, and associate it with any number that you would like, just so I can remember my personal meeting ID number, I actually associate it uh, with my cell phone, okay? And uh, here at our company, we happen to use uh, Google Calendar, so I'll show it to you that way. If anyone out there uh, happens to use, uh, say, Outlook as an option, we do have that as a plugin uh, that is included also. So it, uh, it just goes ahead and uh, it will populate the, uh, the meeting. You go down here in the lower right corner and this is where you would put in the email addresses of the people that you want to invite. Here's a, here's a few really, you know, what I call great things about Zoom. First of all, you don't have to sign up. You don't, to, uh, as a guest, you don't have to pay for anything. Um, simply, if you wanted to invite someone to be on this Zoom call, you send this invite out. They download an application, and this application is only 9 meg, and so it generally takes less than 30 seconds to download this application. 90, 95% of the time also, we are able to get through firewalls. So this is generally not blocked um, uh, at most organizations. So you download that application one time and then you're able to get into Zoom meeting. So what, what you see when uh, you send this out is uh, they can click on this link on a PC, on a Mac, tablet, smartphones, okay? And um, in every call, there is also a, uh, a telephone, a, a dial-in number in addition to that, okay? And then uh, this uh, AT still, has access to the H.323 systems, there's also IP addresses uh, to call into uh, if you wanted to come in that way too. Any questions uh, so far? I, I guess uh, also to get your account set up, the way we're asking people at ATSU to do it is to send a, an email to the help desk at ATSU.edu, and that way we can get you set up and get you set up a pro account, which gives you more features, more functions. Um, you can't sign up on your own through their 
zoom.us website, but then it gives you a basic account. And we don't know that you've joined. So if you, if you go through the help desk, we can set you up with the right account. Okay, like free for any ATSU person. So when, when they do that, um, then uh, for each one of you individuals, you will get an email back to sign up, and then essentially you need to create your own password, and then you'll be ready to go. The major difference um, between a free account and a paid account is that um, the free account caps out at 40 minutes. Okay, so that's why I encourage you to to use one of. Everyone has has the capability at AT still to have their own account. So I would. I would uh, highly suggest that. Okay. I want to show you some other uh, features also. So in the, uh, down here there is a home button just to the uh, right of that is the meetings uh, tab. And this is where you can see what meetings that you have coming up, all right? And this is where you would go in and you would change your own PMI, your personal meeting ID number, uh, to your own account. Uh, you would click on this edit button, of course, because I'm in this meeting, I can't change that right now, but that's how you would do it, okay? Wait, why would you do that? Um, this personal meeting ID number, you could, uh, this is the number that you could give out to say any of your students or any other faculty, and basically say, you know, uh, join me in my uh, Zoom room, and this is the number that uh, people could always go into that would never change. So you, there's there's one of two ways that you can invite people. Um, you can either send out a, a, a Zoom invitation that has a random number, or you can send out an invitation that has that personal meeting ID number that never changes. And then once you change that, then every invite that you send out will have that. I personally yes yes and you don't have to use it but I that's what I do um, and it's uh, it's just a very easy way for people to get a hold of me in fact I even put it in my uh, signature of my email and uh, there is a link right here that is also created and this is the link that you could put in your signature if you wanted someone could just click on that link and then immediately go into your room okay what I, want, what I also now want to really show you that is really cool about Zoom uh, most recently in 3.0 and most recently that came out in 3.5 is our own built-in IM presence. And essentially what it is, if you've ever used something like Skype, um, this has the ability to see if someone is, uh, is, is essentially present, okay? Um, so this could be colleagues, this could be uh, students, this could be uh, friends, relatives, and, and basically so I, I can see this person, Court, is on a desktop. I can see that other people are on a mobile. Because this person is listed in green, uh, they're available. If you, if you go further down, these are all the people that are in red that are uh, not available. And so I have a mixture. So Andreas is my distributor in uh, Germany. Uh, Mike Mills is actually with uh, Flagstaff Medical, um, and so I have, you know, I have people that are in my company and outside of it. The upper right hand corner here is a plus button, and that is where you would actually click on, click on that plus button, and then that's how you invite people, and it will send an email for someone to accept to be part of your group. Then uh, the next thing, that's for individuals. The next thing that we have is we have uh, the ability to create groups, okay? And this could be quite helpful for, say, say you want to have a group of, of maybe one class of all students, okay? So you can, you can have this group, and what's nice about it, whether it's individual contacts or an entire group, Say uh, you click on your group, in one click, you could immediately invite everyone into that uh, Zoom meeting and they could all come in on video. Or else you could send out chats to the entire group.
going back to uh, uh, how how some of the IM works, let me just show you that. Do you see the uh, do you see the uh, uh, chat that I had started with Port England? Did that pop up? No. Okay. Because I'm in a call, it's not showing, so I'm going to grab a do a screen capture and then I'll walk you through it. with someone and so you have you can do a screen capture you can send an image or now in zoom 3.5 which just came out two weeks ago you can send a file within this uh, platform okay and if you're on a, uh, a tablet or a smartphone you can actually insert a uh, audio message into it okay This is messaging outside of a call. Um. Yeah. Exactly. Sorry if I wasn't clear on that. So um, let me just show you some of the different options that you have on uh, on screen sharing. So do you see your uh, website up there now? Yes. Okay. So what you have when you if you want to do annotation, you have the ability to uh, what's what's Another cool feature is you have the ability to do uh, annotation, and anyone can annotate. So if anyone else joined this meeting, they could annotate, and it would come up in a different color. Okay. So um, it's yeah, there you go. So it's, it's essentially co-annotation. Okay. And um, and so you could either do you could do one of two things if you wanted to save this. You could do a screen capture, okay, and save it that way. Or I am recording this entire call, um, and so then it would be recorded in that capacity. Um, up until up until 3.5, which was just released, we we used to have only one option uh, in recording, okay, and uh, that option was to record locally on your own hard drive which is fine, but for some people it gets a little bit complicated. Um, my wife is, uh, uh, she's an online teacher for uh, Primavera High School in Arizona, and uh, they use uh, Adobe Kinetic, and one of the things that she liked, there's a lot of things she doesn't like about it, but they, they, had, a, they had a cloud-based recording capability. And we just recently came out with that, and so now you have a choice. We're just in beta, but we'll, we'll be releasing it probably in the next two to three weeks, going live with it. Um, you'll have the choice to either do local recording or recording up to our cloud. And uh, so I'll, I'll just show you what that looks like a little bit. Basically, it, it just asks you when you get the recording. Do you want to record it locally or up into the cloud? Okay. Just real quickly, I wanted to show you what uh, what it also looked like on uh, coming in on a tablet. Okay. So this is the Zoom app. All right. Works on, like I said, it works on uh, uh, iOS, Android, tablets, smartphones. It's even. Uh, Q1, we're even going to have a Linux capability. Um, so I'm just going to put in the uh, the meeting ID to join. Okay. And did you see me come in? You see me come in twice now. Yes. Yeah. Here's a really cool thing about Zoom: it is it is smart enough to know that I don't know if you can read that smart enough to know that I have two devices that are in the same room at the same time and so I've auto muted this one so so you don't get echo a lot of executives will will uh, be say they're in a meeting they want to be on their own device even though they're sitting in the same room at the same time 
is they want to do their presentation off of their device. And so uh, that's kind of a nice feature. Here I think there's also something that's very helpful. Um, you can read that. Again, I'll tell you, it's, these are all the different ways that you can share information off of uh, your tablet. So I can share photos. Uh, I can share from a whiteboard. I can share from Box, uh, Dropbox, Google Drive, uh, any of those. Okay. And um, so ahead of this meeting, I happen to load a P uh, PDF file into this. And, uh, and so this is off of my iPad in Dropbox. Now I'm just enlarging it using my fingers, okay? And now I can do annotation. So you can basically do a you can basically do a whole presentation right off of your iPad. Because we now have cloud-based recording, you could also do um, you could you could record starting off of your iPad also, okay? One of the last things I wanted to show you, well, I forgot to tell you one other thing, is uh, when you are uh, doing a presentation and you're sharing your computer, you have the ability to give someone else control of your computer remotely too. So you do have that too. Lastly, what I wanted to show you, and uh, Zoom is the, uh, is the first company in the world to have this as an option, is you can share uh, any of your iPhone or iPad applications right through your PC or Mac, okay? And uh, so let me show you how you do that. So if you if you need to show any type of applications off of uh, off of your system, we do it through what is called AirPlay. Does everyone see my uh, my iPad right now? Yes. Okay. So I could just go to any one of these uh, any one of these apps. Redfin is a is a real estate company that's a client of mine out of Seattle, um, and I can just pull up any information that I have in there and then share that app. Here's my own app. Um, I can actually show you just a little bit about what the app looks like on an on a, uh, iPhone or an iPad. Of uh, This is what it looks like to go in and start to schedule a meeting. Uh, it auto-populates the invite. Here is the uh, I am in presence uh, on the iPad. So very, very cool stuff. And uh, I could do that on either my iPhone or my iPad. So that's the general overview. I'd, I'd like to uh, uh, open it up for questions if, uh, if you'd like to, uh, uh, to ask me anything you want about Zoom. Do you say you have a uh, Linux client coming in quarter uh, one? We do, we have a very, very large client uh, that, that we're building it for. Um, if you wanted to look at getting on the beta of that, uh, I could uh, I could get in, you know, give me a call or send me an email. Okay. I'd be happy to uh, set you up with that. Is it going to be HTML5 based or is it going to be a native Linux client? Just like that, you're already over my head. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's all right, I'll give you a call. <laughs> Please do. I know there's several people have asked me is using uh, Zoom as like as office hours for an online course or as even a course presentation material. So I, I think that sharing your screen, you can show a PowerPoint, you can show whatever you want to show by sharing your screen, and you can have you know, 25 people as a as the starting account, but if you need more than 25 people on a, in a call, we can set you up a larger account. I have a question. Sure. If, uh, if you have a pro account and you're meeting with somebody who has a basic account, will that time limit still be enforced if you set up a meeting? No, I, the question was if, if you have a, a pro account and you're meeting with a basic account person, a person without even an account at all, they don't need right. to have an account, Right. Uh, it goes off of your account because you're the one that scheduled the meeting. Okay. Absolutely. So uh, all of these meetings, uh, you have access to have unlimited 
Um, as long as you have, you know, some kind of high-speed internet, this literally works anywhere on in the world. We have special algorithms that you have very, very low latency, even on very low bandwidth. Occasionally, say if you're meeting with a, maybe you're doing a meeting with a student, that student is very, very remote, and their internet is not that strong. Uh, if, the, if the signal is very, very weak, we will actually shrink down the size of the video in order to keep the uh, audio going. Um, so you might occasionally see that. Uh, the other thing is if uh, people are on a wireless, I happen to be in my office right now on a wired network because we have so many people um, in this office right now that I didn't trust the wireless. But if you're on a wireless network or say some of your other students, you will actually see. So what I see is in the lower left hand corner right now, I see Dean's name and then I see uh, white bars that go all the way, all the way up. So it means it's a very, very strong signal right now. But if it if it was not that strong of an internet, it would go to yellow and then down to red. So you, you might want, if you had like a student that's coming in that way, you might want to notify them that um, that there might be some you know, issues that way. Uh, yes. What are the uh, retention and distribution options when you record to the cloud? What are the retention and distribution options when you record to the cloud? Retention. How long does it stay there for? Is, is, is there any limits on how much you can put on the cloud? Uh, is it, so can you make we, it private? Yeah, so the way that it's going to work is uh, we're going to have uh, we're going to have a certain amount that's going to be free for every client. And then there's going to be a certain, you know, certain amount that we will charge for, um, and then that would, and it would be basically your own area of you know, AT Stills' uh, own area that has all of your own videos. I it's so new for us that we're because we're in beta. I don't even have pricing yet, but just to give you a sense of perspective. Uh, generally, so here here are some of our competitors. Uh, of course. The founders company, WebEx, go to meeting, okay? And some of those competitors are generally were were, were generally seventy to eighty percent less in price. And so I would assume that, that that's going to be probably the way it will be with our cloud reporting also. Yeah? When um when you have a meeting and people are calling into it. Um, do you have a capability for them um, to a prompt that has them identify that they've joined the meeting? Because we used to use the life size of a conference call, and it would beep, and then people would have to identify themselves if they were using the, the telephone. And now it's, it's kind of all over the place because they just join a meeting. We don't even know they're there. I guess the question is, that how do you tell that somebody's joined a meeting on the life size? Because I guess usually the life size switches is do voice switching. So somebody in the background, you wouldn't even know that they're there. Uh, there is a way to do the life size, and you have to use the remote. And I think it's like a program one or something like that, but it'll show everybody in the call at once. So it has, you'll have multiple screens in the life size. But some people still choose not to do the video part. They just are using the phone part to join the call. And we have no idea that they've joined. Yeah. Um, so when you when you uh, when you get on your own Zoom account, there will be a place at the bottom, okay, of the screen, and it's just to the left of Share Screen, and it will be called Manage Participants. And if you click on that, you will be able to see everyone that is on the call. All right. Now, if someone is literally driving down the road and they come in over their phone, okay. I mean, you're, you're not going to know who it is unless they identify themselves. But once they identify them, if you say, hey, it's Tom, okay, you could actually go then into Manage Participants and you could change that number to that person's name. So you, then you would remember who, who is, you know, who's all on, the, on their telephones, okay? Now, if they came in on a Life Size or a Polycom or any of those other devices, they will actually show up and you, you will be able to see them on the call. Right. Okay. So in addition to that, that brings, yeah, Dean's coming in on something else. 
And so I just went to uh, gallery view. I'll take a screenshot of this just to show you what it looks like. But in this, in this mode, you can have up to 25 people that you can see all at the same time. Right. All right. I've used it a lot for uh, large meetings. It's just those people that happen to call in. And when I take attendance, I have no idea that somebody else is out there in the telephone world. I see them all, the 25 of them, on my screen. I just, and then it doesn't beep, it doesn't notify me that someone has joined. Mm -hmm. So just silently, they, they're coming in, and I don't, I have no idea anybody is even on the phone line part portion of it. Okay. Yep. Um, one other thing that's probably would probably be useful to know is um, you want me to just really briefly show you uh, the uh, reporting so you know who is on the call afterwards? I, I typically need to know before we, you know, it's like a, an attendance thing. I can talk with you offline because it's Got obviously it. my issue, but um, yeah, I, I, it's something I need to know at the beginning of a meeting when I take attendance. To so you, you go to manage participants and that's where you will pull up and you will see everyone that is on that is currently on the call. And like I said, if they come in over a telephone, um, you're going to have to ask. You know, who yeah, that that, that's the tricky ones. Is the phone call people? I always know the video people. I just don't know. It's yeah. just they silently are joining, and I don't even know they're out there. I, I could help you with that later. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? I understand that the life size has an encryption built in. If you zoom from phone to phone, what is the security? Uh, security options, uh, with life size, and or security options just with a zoom to zoom. From, from zoom to zoom. So everything that we have is AES encrypted. It's uh, this is a very very encrypted. It's HIPAA compliant for uh, if you're kind of using it in the medical industry at all. Um, we also have, without getting too technical, we have AES <coughs> 55 encryption. Basically, it means that we are encrypted end-to-end -end throughout the entire call, all right? We keep uh, all, we have two data centers in New York and California. We keep no data uh, information on, you know, on our cloud. We are simply passing information through. You can turn off and on encryption uh, as, a, uh, as a user or the person, the main administrator. So I work with a major uh, telehealth organization in uh, Portland, and they have to have encryption on every call. And so the administrator uh, can override it, and, uh, and they do. And so they have encryption across the entire company for every call. Uh, from online uh, about uh, ATSU students getting an account. Um, for that, ATSU students can get basic accounts. Uh, they can go on to the zoom.us and, and sign up and create their own account. Um, because they have an ATSU address, they, don't, they can use that if they want to or not. It, they'll show up in our, in our system, but they won't have a pro account like ATSU uh, employees or the staff do. And another question from online, is there a way, for Jay, uh, is there a way to reduce or limit the amount of bandwidth that Zoom uses? Uh, if you're running on a, a data plan and you're doing phone calls, uh, doing Zoom connection from a 4G and it's using a lot of data, how do you throttle that back? Currently we do not have that option, but I, I know that we are working on that. You can probably just call in with a telephone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's right, but Use your minutes instead of your data. There is also uh, under our support section on uh, on the Zim uh, home site, 
it will actually tell you um, basic requirements of bandwidth that you really should have in order to do a, a proper call. Yeah, I'm curious just for other people in the room or online or, or even Jay, I guess. Um, does anyone have innovative ideas on how to use some of this technology for classroom type scenarios? Or Jay, do you have any other clients who are you know, doing something maybe with their, their mobile phone or their uh, smartphones and you know, doing displays or something kind of creative from a, a learning process? Oh, the, we'll repeat the question for the online people. Uh, we're looking for ways that to use Zoom in the classroom for educational purposes and how to be in, used innovatively. Uh, and just kind of asking people in general what their thoughts are if they want to post a comment. So I think of Zoom also as a traditional way of, of, of using online type teaching that you have in the past with the traditional hardware based codex. So um, hopefully my picture quality is, is pretty good. I'm, I'm literally on a $70 Logitech camera here, okay? Um, but you could be on in a classroom, this is what they will do a lot of times, is they will, like someone like Ryan Hutman, they'll, they'll have a, a pen tilt zoom type camera, okay? Um, and, uh, and be able to zoom in, in back and forth on the instructor. They may even have a second camera that um, they uh, want to zoom in with certain presets on the students. And they could even have a third camera that could be more like a document type of a camera and then actually do you know, the, the instruction that way. Um, say, you, say you're teaching a, uh, a math class um, and, uh, and you want to have, uh, you're working on an Excel sheet, okay? You do have the capability to have uh, that student take over your computer or vice versa, okay? And you could both be putting in, uh, inputting you know, information into the same Excel sheet if you wanted to do that, okay? Um, another thing that I hear a lot about is just general um, office hours for students to come in. So say you can set up, you can do a reoccurring meeting, say every Thursday at three o'clock, and that could be your, you know, online office hours that you basically could just have students pop in if they had questions uh, that, that you wanted to meet with them. And so, I mean, that's the power of, of Zoom is the technology of face-to-face -face communication. Like I said, I've been doing this since 1993. I mean, it, it's been around, but it's never been as simple as it is now. And I, I have, a, you know, 12 and 14 year old daughters and, they have smartphones now. They, everyone seems to have some kind of, of a system to be able to come into these calls now. And so that, that's really what the power of it is, is, is just uh, creating it and making it so simple for, for anyone to come in. Any other questions? Yeah, some uh, other ideas from online. People use uh, traveling for business purposes. I guess you can, while you're traveling, talk to your students and work with your students still. Um, student study groups or another op th thing that somebody suggested. Co-teaching with a remote colleague. So if you had a, a live classroom and you had somebody distant, you want to bring a, a, a subject matter expert from any place in the country, any place in the world, really. Great ideas. Any other questions, comments? All right, well, thanks a lot, Jay. We appreciate you coming in. Yeah, sorry that, it, uh, that I said I was only gonna be on for 15 minutes, which turned into uh, 35, but uh, That's okay. hopefully, hopefully this was helpful. And I, I greatly appreciate you uh, taking the time to learn more about uh, Zoom today. And if any of you have uh, any questions or need any help, please reach out to me directly. I'll provide my uh, email address through the email. Very good. And also, if you need anything from the ATSU side, please send a, an email to the at helpdesk at atsu.edu um, for assistance or even to get started.
So you go ahead and set up a, an account that way through helpdesk.atsu.edu. All right, appreciate it, Jay. Very good. Thank you for your time today. Thanks. All right, take care. All right, uh, the next section, session, we'll give it a couple minutes here for people to clear out. We're going to talk a little bit about all the different video conferencing options we have and what you would use for what scenario. You guys um, want to miss the best part? <laughs> the best part. Yeah. 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 Uh, be just a moment. Good morning, everybody. My name's Ryan. Uh, Dean asked me to give, give a, a talk about uh, video conferencing at the school. I'm going to talk about our uh, software at the school. I'm also going to talk about our hardware. So uh, some of the classrooms have uh, life-size units built into them. You guys might have seen me wheel around our cart, affectionately called Johnny Five. Uh, he's called that after the uh, famous robot from Short Circuit. And um, None of our rooms look like this, but I wish they did. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of options at the school, and you might be wondering what to use for what situation. So I'm going to talk about them. Um, so what do you want to do in your call? Do you want to be one-to-one? -one? Is it going to be just you and someone else that you're going to be talking to? Is, uh, oops, is it going to be one-to-many? Are you going to be you to, like, uh, let's say, a classroom or a group of people? Is it going to be many-to-many? -many? Maybe it's a classroom to another classroom. Do you need to share um, video, voice, and your screen? Maybe you want to present, so you need to share your screen. Uh, you need, how many participants are you going to have? Are you going to have 100? Is it a giant class that you need to, to talk to? Uh, do you want to have chat? Do you want to have polling? Uh, what all would you need to, uh, for your video conference? And I'm going to talk about some of the things that, um, that you might have, what, what's available to you and you could kind of figure out what uh, would work best for the kind of meeting you want to have. Uh, so here are some suggestions for hardware and software. So a laptop is honestly, it's built for one person to communicate. It works best for one person to sit in front of a laptop. So if you have a laptop and you want to do a one to many, uh, like you to many people or just you to someone else, uh, a laptop would work great for that. It is not very good to set it up in a meeting room. You don't want to put your laptop in the front of the room here, uh, it doesn't work very well that way. The next step up from that is what we use today. We use this Logitech camera here to, to accomplish that for this room. So, uh, so a room this size is about, is, it's, uh, it does a good job. Uh, we're getting to the, the limits of its capabilities with a, a room this size though. Uh, the best for a, a large group would be our life-size units, uh, which would include Johnny Five and some of the classrooms that have it built in, integrated into the classroom. And there's quite a bit of software too. And we are honestly going to, we're going to direct you towards Zoom. We've had a great response using Zoom. Uh, uh, it does everything and more. And um, it, uh, we can offer the pro licenses for free. We actually went over all this uh, earlier with, with Jay. And uh, we've actually been using it with, um, with uh, most though. We have a, um, uh, a lecturer um, 
Charles Acoria, who presented a two-week-long class remotely to all of uh, the class in Flagstaff and the Sim Lab, Simulation Lab for Dental, and it went uh, swimmingly well. Uh, other things we offer is, is Google Hangouts. It's built into Gmail. That's what's awesome about it. Uh, all the IT staff, we use uh, uh, Google uh, Chat uh, all the time. Uh, even though uh, Zoom does offer that, I don't think any of us has really been using that, or I don't know anybody who's been using uh, Zoom's chat, just because we're always in our email, and we always have the Google Chat, and it's always available. And it's really easy to start up a Hangout with, um, within Gmail. And it also integrates with uh, mobile phones and stuff, and it's, it's nice as well. Uh, so downsides about it is uh, you have to have a Google Plus profile to use it. Uh, so if you're inviting people that are not part of the school, you'd have to ask them to get a Gmail account if they don't have one, and they would have to sign up for Google Plus before they would be able to join a meeting. And I think you would also have to find them both. You would have to find each other and become, uh, you would have to invite them as a, as a contact. Uh, whereas, um, what's cool about Zoom is, uh, earlier he was talking about his personal meeting ID. Well, my personal meeting ID is my phone number. So if anybody went to zoom.us slash j slash my phone number, they could go to my meeting room. So I could tell that to, that to someone on the phone, I don't have to send them a link, or I could just send them a link, I don't have to send them a special invite, I don't have to find them as a contact, they could just click on that and join my meeting. Uh, there's also Skype. Uh, they now have uh, group calling for free, which is something they didn't offer before, but uh, as of last year, they are, they're offering that for free now. And uh, a lot of people are familiar with it. It's actually integrated into the newest Xbox, and um, it's owned by Microsoft now. Uh, and, but uh, some of the same limitations, you have to, be, you have to download it, sign up, um, and then you have to find each other's contacts before you can actually uh, talk to each other. So it's a little bit harder for guests to get started. Once they're started, it's very easy. But uh, unlike Zoom, it makes it, there's so many people who have never done video conferencing when we do video conferencing. It's really easy just to give them a link and that's all they need to know. Just click on that and the instructions walk you through the rest. Uh, other video conferencing systems, uh, there's FaceTime that's offered by Apple. Uh, there's Blackboard's Collaborate. Uh, we used to have Scopia. We don't use that anymore. We've replaced it with Zoom officially now. Uh, there's also WebEx and GoToMeeting. Um, I have used all of these. Actually, I haven't used FaceTime, but I've used all the rest of these. And uh, in my own experience, Zoom is honestly, it's been the best. I have not found a better uh, meeting tool than Zoom so far. And then what kind of hardware is best for me? This is again talking about the, uh, the rooms. Uh, I'm gonna talk about life size. This is our, our, our uh, video conferencing hardware that we have in some of the meeting rooms and in the classrooms. Uh, we have multiple endpoints. They're located here in Mesa and also on the Kirksville campus. Uh, and all the, all the uh, community health centers uh, have one as well. Uh, these devices offer uh, the best for audio and video. They're, uh, they just do it the best. So if you can use one of these, I would suggest it. And especially if you can schedule a room that has one, I would suggest that you schedule it. If you need uh, help getting set up, uh, I would suggest sending in uh, uh, a ticket to help desk. And we could get you, you schedule my time and Corey or Barb's or Dean's time in Kirksville to come get you set up uh, in the room. If you'd like to do it yourself, I would be glad to teach you as well. Uh, it's not something that only IT has to do, uh, but we don't mind doing it, it's easy. Uh, here's some uh, suggestions for video conferencing if you are gonna be using uh, your laptop. When you're using your laptop, I'm gonna suggest that you use a headset. That's the headphones and the microphone, like a, a little boom mic. Uh, I would also suggest to try not to use Wi-Fi. Most people do, you'll probably be fine. It's, uh, there's, there is a chance though that um, uh, Wi-Fi is just not as a reliable connection as a wired uh, connection. Uh, to schedule a conference room, uh, um, schedule a conference room if you have multiple people that need to connect. So if you, um, it, it will just, 
I wrote that wrong. What I meant to say is, is um, IT cannot book rooms. We don't have the ability to book our own rooms, so we, uh, we have some help from the library uh, to, to book rooms, and also the library can help book my time. So they'll, they're kind of like a go-to person. So if you need to book a life-size unit and a room, you can contact the library and say, I want this for this day. And then also uh, the same thing would happen in Kirksville. I need this room in Kirksville on this day at this time. And they'll schedule the rooms. They will also schedule our time to make sure that we're there too. And that's it. I ran through that because <laughs> I think Dean got most, I mean, uh, Jay had most of it. <laughs> Uh, what, um, what's the maximum number of people on the Zoom? Uh, it depends. There's two different versions. Uh, you, uh, it's 25, 25 for, for, for a pro account. Anybody, but we have a, a limited number of large meeting licenses that we can give to people for, you know, on a temporary basis. So if you are planning on meeting, it, it's going to be just a one-time thing. We can give you a, a large meeting uh, up to 100, just a, a quick on the, on the server. So. Yes. Sorry, I missed the beginning of the other presentation. Do we need to download something to use Zoom? Is there a yeah. uh, send a, an email to the help desk and, and, just ask them and then ask them, and then we, we set you up with a, an account and it'll send you an email with instructions and it'll okay. help you download it. Yeah. Could the book a large room just email help desk? Or yeah, you can you can email help desk or uh, you could email the library yourself. <laughs> Uh, we, we're going to large room with also. Ka Catherine has been been doing it. Okay. And I guess some of the, the pluses and minuses of some of the the, the different ones. Um, again, we're going to push Zoom because we really like it. it it's new and it, it's been great for everybody. But uh, it's it's free, which is a good thing, and, and you don't have to have a thing to use it. Like uh, using a life size, we have a lot of them, but most people in the world don't. Uh, it's very expensive equipment. Uh, it takes a long time to, to a lot of uh, money each year. You're going to keep running maintenance contracts. So more and more, I think the world's moving away from that sort of, sort of thing and more towards everybody having their device and connecting together and then less big conference room systems like that. Um, collaborate, uh, Blackboard, we use a, a lot of the online people are using that. Um, that's free to anybody at ATSU as well, but Lately, the Java in, that it's based on has stopped working on several devices and it's gotten kind of flaky, so we're kind of telling people to be careful using it. It's, it a lot of times the meetings end up badly. Uh, and I did email Blackboard about it, but I haven't heard back on my They're supposed to have a, a new version of Collaborate come out with HTML5, but I haven't heard back. Yes. Are there headsets with the kind of mics you were describing in the classrooms, or is that something you need to order? Or? That's that's something that if you're going to sit at, um, if you're going to use your laptop or if you're going to use your desktop, you would use a headset. Right. So you're talking. I, I know we we do that for like one-to-one -one meetings and on go-to meetings, but you were saying like in the classrooms. The classroom's different. Sorry. Okay. So in the classroom, you're just using the regular mic in the classroom. Yeah, and and honestly, right now there. A lot of the classrooms aren't, uh, all the classrooms use video conferencing a little bit different. It depends on what the, the, the need is in the classroom. So like uh, a good example is Cougar. Cougar has um, microphones at every single table that people can use to talk to uh, anyone else. And that's unique for that classroom. Uh, the Northwestern Mutual Conference Room has the ability to send any of the other uh, cameras from the other rooms to uh, the video conferencing unit and be able to be shared to anyone throughout the world. So if we wanted to do a surgery in the bariatric suite, we can take that camera feed, send it to Zoom, send it to whoever, and anybody could watch that surgery. Right, so you can send it to like the, the life-size unit, is that where it's going? Yeah. And then you can send that out. So a lot of the rooms are very specific. Uh, another uh, room we recently um, upgraded was our turquoise conference room now is set mainly for uh, Zoom. Uh, and it, it does not have a video conferencing unit in it. And it's been working great. It's a smaller room, but um, I, I think that's gonna, uh, we're gonna try to start moving towards that instead of buying these very expensive life-size units, we're gonna start putting in a software solution. So if you use turquoise, 
you can bring in a room from Kirksville under Zoom without any problem? Yeah. That's the, that's the advantage of, of Zoom. Zoom connects to those, I, I just those sure hardware the units. Rooms in Kirksville had that uh, we, we'll have to do some work on that end, too. But. It's, so, so in Kirksville, you, you book a room that has a life-size unit. The life-size unit can connect to Zoom. Or somebody can come to their office or from their iPad. Yeah. Or from their phone. Yeah. Their phone. Or their old, plain, non-smart telephone. They could just dial the number. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. So, so if you wanted to connect to, the, to um, a classroom in Kirksville, yeah. what, what would we need to do? Like, I want to teach from here to the classroom there. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. Uh, if, if it's just going to be you in your office, mm -hmm. I would suggest just get a headset and use your desktop. You would download Zoom mm -hmm. and connect and um, they, Danny would hook you up. Because they have life size in their mm -hmm. in the classrooms like we do? Yep. Okay. Dan, Danny would hook you up. We've been I doing that for uh, uh, Dr. Ficcioni and uh, Dr. Pavlik have been doing that. They've been using the Mustang room or, or the Bobcat room that mm -hmm. has, has it built in. Right. But it's not, I mean, they could easily do it from their desk. Good to know, just in case there's bad weather. Yeah. <laughs> did, did anybody else have any questions? I also have a list of, of like uh, capabilities of each room, and uh, it's pretty in depth because we have so many rooms, um, and each one has a uh, does things a little bit different depending on the layout, what uh, what equipment is in there. Uh, any classroom could easily use one of these. Uh, this this eyeball camera. You can check this out from the help desk. Um, it doesn't, like I said, a group this size is about the maximum that you can have where this microphone will pick you up. That's, that's um, the microphone won't pick up a, a bigger room or a bigger audience. It's very hard. Go ahead. Do you have that list of room capabilities available? Yep. It's on the uh, Google Drive and I can, I can share, I don't know if it's, uh, it, it is public, but I don't think anybody has the link to it. But uh, it's something that I would be glad to share with everybody. There's a list of, of meeting rooms, and then I have a second list of just classrooms and, and capabilities of those. Yeah, that, that would be really, really helpful. Yeah, for sure. It is also on the ITS site, ITS website, atsu.edu, ATS a list of rooms, all the rooms and all, on both campuses and kind of what the capabilities of the rooms are. Mm -hmm. And it's calendars for those rooms, too. If people use the calendars to book them, you can use that. Mm -hmm. Right on. There you go, Brian. Plug your website for you. <laughs> All right, I'm done. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Thanks.